Welcome to the show today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, You've heard me say before that for the secular progressive movement, sex ed is their sales funnel, abortion is their product, and your daughters are their prospects. You see, if you can sexualize a culture and a society and debase them to their most fundamental animalistic cravings and desires, it prevents rational thinking, and it allows you to upend society and recreate it in your own image. The high pontiffs of secular progressivism have always understood this, but for far too long, the church and the conservative and the pro-life movement have acclimated to the culture because things happen gradually then suddenly and the left understands they can't overplay their hand they have to implement their premises slowly but surely until the people become accustomed to them which is why we need ezekiel watchmen people who are blowing the trumpet warning the church the culture and the pro-life movement of these alternative ideologies dare i say an alternative religion which is why i love to have guests on this podcast who understand these issues and can speak to them and inform educate and inspire those good people who have remained silent to begin speaking. My new friend Audrey Werner is the founder and president of the Matthew 18 group. She's the dean of life issues at Masters International University of Divinity. She wrote an incredible book called 10 Tips on How Not to Talk to Your Kids About Sex. Kind of interesting title. Makes you go, well, I thought sex ed was good. If they're going to do it, they might as well do it safely. And and what we need to begin understanding is that these intellectual thought leaders of progressivism have used comprehensive sexuality education as a way to sexualize young people, exposing them to any and all forms of sexual activity because they're disciples of Alfred Kinsey, who believed that children were sexual from birth and had sexual rights to sexual pleasure. You've heard me talk about Kinsey before. You've heard me have my friend Monica Klein on the show to talk about some of these issues, but we're going to take a little bit more of a deep dive today. Audrey Werner's book is a bombshell of information in regards to these ideologies and these alternative philosophies, which predate even the sexual revolution. As a former sex educator and STD nurse, Audrey began to realize the kind of ideas that she was complicit in and began blowing the trumpet for the next generation. You're in for a treat. Buckle up. I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. Audrey, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me, Seth. Honored Absolutely. to be here. Absolutely. Yes, it's long overdue. I and I apologize. My we've been traveling a lot, and our family just moved, uh, as I shared with my my guest recently. Um, however, we have many mutual friends, and I was um, initially exposed to you by Monica Klein, who was a mm-hmm. former sex educator for Planned Parenthood, yes. um, and now runs an organization called It Takes a Family, um, which is very much kind of your heart as well. And, and so yes. I was so encouraged by your book and so much of your work um, for, for for this. Reason reason, and then I think this will launch us right into our conversation, the amount of ignorance in the church and even in the pro-life movement regarding what sex ed has become and specifically what comprehensive sexuality education, which if you guys listen to the show, you need to understand CSE stands for comprehensive sexuality education. This is the dominant um, method and curriculum for sexual education in today's American public, America's public schools. And many religious institutions and quote-unquote Christian yes. organizations have adopted right. some of the similar type of curriculum as well. And so when I began diving into this stuff over a year ago, Audrey, I, I, I could not believe um, the dark agenda and relationship between many of these different thought leaders that that yes. spawned what we call sex ed today. So I wanted you to talk to all of that. But firstly, uh, you can, you have an interesting background, which is actually all that more powerful um, as to your lane today and the voice you've developed today on these issues. So first, Audrey, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, <laughs> your experience and involvement with sex ed, the, the STD clinic you worked with. You know, start there and tell us your journey. Well, and I grew up in the church. I went to Christian schools, uh, Christian grade school, Christian high school. So I've been exposed to that. But um, and I married the youth pastor of our church, so wow. who became the family life pastor. Um, okay. So I had been in church work and, and in the church for a long time. 
But the thing that um, really woke me up was in the 1980s, I was a sex educator. Now, you have to remember back in the 1980s, we had the AIDS crisis, right? So they were telling us at the time that sex education was a great tool to decrease the pregnancy and the STD rates. So this was a time I thought, okay, I can help out parents. We didn't have children at that time. So I did that for five years did that during the 1980s when we had the HIV AIDS crisis. So now we're going in and doing something different. We're also talking to children about safe oral and anal sex, which we had never talked about before. Um, and so I did that. And then we were blessed with our first child. I still wanted to work for the health department, but I wanted to work part time. So that is when I, when I started working in the STD clinic, it's as if the Lord said, okay, I want you to see the fruit of your labor. And I wow. saw things getting progressively worse. Children at younger and younger ages were becoming sexually active. Uh, date rape uh, dramatically exploded in the 1990s. And that was due to our uh, president at the time, President Clinton's administration had taken the restrictions off the porn industry. And so we were watching the direct correlation to how it was creating a public health crisis. Uh, because wow. young women, when they're raped, they don't usually go to the police station. If it's someone they know, they come to the STD clinic. So it was a huge opener. And at the same time, I had gone through a Christian sex ed program in my elementary school. And so wow. somebody changed me to look into Christian sex ed as well as secular. And they all had the same root. Really? Yes. Interesting. And when did you come to that uh, realization? When did you look into that? Uh, that was about 1996, 97. Uh, there was a group of moms at the Christian school I had graduated from, and now my our son was our firstborn. And he was in preschool at the time that I started doing this research, and I knew he'd be starting at this school where they had this Christian sex ed. So I always say that um, when you want to know on whose authority is someone giving you information, always go to the bibliography. And so I went to the bibliography right. of this Christian sex ed, which was written in the 1960s, uh, because it's interesting, in the 1990s, they had you know done updated editions and there was no bibliography. So I went back to the original bibliography, wow. found Albert Kinsey, Hugh Hefner, uh, Mary Calderon, uh, Planned Parenthood. So I thought, wow, this is this is kind of important. I think the church wow. needs to know this. <laughs> wow. So uh, that's when yeah. I had an argument with God. I thought, this is huge. The entire Christian church is in error. Um, yep. How in the heck am I going to wake everyone up? Right. And so um, every time I argued with God, he gave me uh, incredible people uh, to wow. educate me. Of them is Judith Reisman, who yeah. was yeah. the number one expert on Kinsey. So, That's right. Well, yeah. we're going to get into Reisman too, Audrey, because I'm sure <laughs> you're you're probably somewhat of a lay expert on <laughs> right. on Judith Reisman, and I am just beginning to be blessed by her. Um, and you know, because I'm a pro life speaker, but in the right. last couple years, I have really uh, widened my horizons. Um, yeah. And enlarged the philosophical height that I fly at, if you will. Yeah. Uh, not to toot my own horn. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that, like, it's very important for people to understand how so many of these issues intersect. You see, because yeah. for the left, they are not single issue people. They they mm -hmm. care about all of the progressive priorities. Now, abortion might be the yeah. sacrament of secular progressivism. It might be sort of the the centerpiece of their political philosophy, because if you can deny the right to life, what else can you not pull off? But but they move forward every segment of the culture of death with passionate zeal. You see Planned Parenthood t tweeting about Black Lives Matter and, and the border and drug laws. And, and you're like, this is weird. I thought you were an abortion clinic. It's like, ah, wake up, church, wake up, people. Like all of these people work together. They have the same agenda. I call it the yes. liberal establishment. Uh, you yes. could call it. You could call it the state church of secular progressivism, the only theocracy in America today. Whatever you want to call it, it's one big blob. And so, when you start looking into some of these things, it's actually yes. foolish to just say, "I'm just going to stay in the pro-life lane." 
or or I'm just going to stay in the sex trafficking lane. Like we need people yeah. fighting those injustices, but and that's fine to be to to be called to a certain issue. Amen. But you need to understand how all of these things intersect. And that begins to open up the eyes of those apathetic people, those good people, those honest men and women who just want to be left in peace who don't want their yeah. little lives disturbed by anything bigger than themselves. And so so that's why I wanted to have you on, Audrey, was to, was to touch on some of those things. So I've talked about how uh, Mary Calderon, the former medical director for Planned Parenthood in 1964, took seed money from Hugh Hefner to, to launch the Sexuality Information Education Council of the United States uh, with board members like uh, Ward L. Pomeroy, who had served at the Kinsey Institute, who was pro-incest, and all these crazy things. Um, yeah. But you dive a lot deeper than that in your book. Book. And so uh, share with us and the people listening, Audrey, a little bit about those first things you began to discover that made you go, oh my gosh. Because from that point, according to your book, you wrote an article, your first published article on the history of this, and you hit a nerve with yes. the people behind this movement. So so tell us what made you go, oh my gosh, and then and then what did you write in this article? Uh, well, probably the first thing being um, the uh, when I said I'm not an expert in Kinsey and Judith educating me on who Alfred Kinsey was and the fact that he interviewed pedophiles. This was a man who yep. was not an objective scientist. He was a subjective scientist and he had an agenda. You know, the media, the, science, right? him, <laughs> the media portrayed him as a happily married man. Gosh, right. they weren't even truthful back then either. Um, yep. And then it turns out that uh, he's a homosexual sadomasochist pedophile uh, <laughs> who did research on children. Um, he <sighs> interviewed pedophiles. And yep. sad to say, uh, you can go to the Kinsey app today, by the way, which is at Kin it, the Kinsey Institute is still at Indiana University. Yep. It you is. can go on the Kinsey app, and if you're raping a child right now, you can send your data to the Kinsey Institute because they're co still compiling all no. that data. Yes. And so they'll take uh, that they, data? Yes. They'll take that data. Oh, Believe me, my there gosh. are people that are talking to attorney generals from the U.S. on to state attorney generals that I are bringing this. I did not know up. that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So. Um, and SECUS, by the way, was launched at the Kinsey Institute. Yes, um, yes. So, I, you know, when I do presentations, I have on my first slide, I have a tree. And, it, you know, the branches being abortion, pornography, okay. um, uh, sodomy, um, sex education. And the trunk of the tree is the American Law Institute's model penal code, which, again, uh, was based on Kinsey so, science. So unpack that. Tell us what yes. that is. Okay. <laughs> the American laws, notice. well, basically, let's back it up to 1923 when a okay. small group met in a room, a uh, wealthy elite who wanted to shift a Christian nation away from God, and the sexual revolution is the best way to do that. So Give us the some revolution, of those names. Yes, the revolutions don't just occur. They take revolutionaries years of pre-planning. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had the Fords, the Carnegies, the Rockefellers, who were the wealthy elite. Uh, there's an excellent uh, book that I quote a lot from Foundations by Renee Wormser. And in yeah. that book is congressional record of in the early 1950s, Congress, our U.S. Congress was actually worried with the direction of morality in America. So they question, uh, are Talk these foundations? Talk about Carol Reese. You're talking about Carol Reese, right? Congressman Carol Reese, yes, um, who was on, he was in, his committee was investigating the Rockefeller-Kinsey connection. And they mm. concluded that the Kinsey reports were a deliberate attempt, uh, a deliberate attack on Judeo-Christian morality, which had wow. been rock solid in America until the 1930s and 40s, That's we right. started to see Well, let me quote you too, Audrey, well, rather what you say in your book here regarding the Reese Committee. So in 1954, yeah. the Reese Committee, named after Congressman uh, B. Carroll Reese, um, who you just said, investigated the foundations of the Population Council and the relationships between the Rockefellers and Alfred Kinsey. 
And uh, they were then tasked with telling the taxpayer, and you write that, quote, the incredible, uh, it was incredible what, what was in fact the truth, that the huge fortunes piled up by such industrial giants as John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, and Henry Ford were today being used to destroy or discredit the free enterprise system which gave them birth. Exactly. Um, and so that, that was some of the findings from what you just referred to. I just wanted people to hear that. Uh, let's say the names again. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford. Um, these were the revolutionaries of their day. Um, these yeah. were the Bernie Sanders, the AOCs, or rather the Bill Gates, uh, <laughs> the people of their day. So continue. Yes, the wealthy elite. So in 1923, they gathered together and uh, um, uh, Colonel Ron Ray, who's uh, the former assistant to the Secretary of Defense and was also working alongside Judith in a campaign in the 1990s called RSVP America, which was restoring social virtue and purity to America. So they were okay. bringing to light. Uh, they investigated 35 out of the 50 states, and they looked in the sex offense sections and found that Kinsey Science was the sole authority used on normal human sexuality. So uh, wow. Colonel Ray, I'll never forget, in 2008, he had a little group uh, that met, uh, and um, uh, he said, I'm just having a little gathering, and, and we're meeting at the Hilton Garden, so let's just call ourselves the Garden Club. And uh, here was the inspector general for the Department of Defense. Uh, I'm sitting between a Kansas attorney general and a senator from Missouri. And there's a Supreme Court justice from Louisiana there. And I thought, wow, this is huge. So um, wow. Colonel got up and said, there's a little group that met in a room in 1923 to start up the American Law Institute. And their goal was to remove 52 Bible-based laws that once protected marriage, women, and children. And he, he looked around there and he said, okay, wow. here we are in 2008. How successful have they been? And he looked around the room and he said, okay, we're a little group in a room and we're meeting and we're going to be diligent just like they are. But the difference is we have God on our side. And I right. thought, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Thank no, you. amen, amen. Well, Audrey, you're you're so informed on these things, and so that's why I keep pausing you because I want people to to capture your knowledge and capture the history of this. So you just mentioned the American Law Institute. Um, tell us a little bit more about that and the agenda of some of these 1920 revolutionaries in terms of removing obscenity laws, changing laws on pornography, uh, rape. Uh, sodomy, I mean, the whole gambit. Talk more about that. Well, based on Kinsey's science, I'm going to say, because it wasn't real science, but based on his findings, he said rape is a myth that um, we're all sexual animals. So rape is never harmful. So then that he was, um, uh, his people were the ones who came in and advised um, different state committees and so they drafted the American Law Institute Model Penal Code in, I believe it was 1955. And the first state to adopt the American Law Institute Model Penal Code was in 1957, and that was the state of Illinois. And then yeah. what happened is it just was a domino effect. And state by state, they would go in and say, okay, you've had these laws since the founding of your nation, since the, your state became a state. You've had the same common laws, which are based on the Bible, by the way. And yeah. we're finding through this new science, we're finding out that, that uh, you know, that people are much more animalistic and, and these things aren't harmful. So we need right. to throw out that old law and we need to bring in the new law. And even right. uh, Judith shared the story. I don't know if you've heard her, her story. She talked about how she met with Justice Scalia. And she shared how the American Law Institute, how they threw out all of these Bible-based laws and they brought in these horrible man-made laws um, that have harmed, uh, you know, women, children, the institution of marriage. And uh, so uh, Justice Scalia said, instead of us coming up with new laws to protect what we're losing, if the old law was thrown out based on fraud, shouldn't we be restoring the old law and making right, it honorable? Right. right so. Right. So, yeah, it went state by state. And, uh, you know, one of those laws that you're hearing a lot about right now is uh, obscenity exemption. What yes. that is, 
it used to be it's illegal to show pornography to children. Right. Uh, and Unless this really, it's in it, an educational it, environment. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's why it was illegal to teach children sex education. For example, in yep. the state of Missouri, to even say the word sexual intercourse in a classroom was considered molesting a minor with immoral intent up to the well, age of 20. <laughs> say that say that sentence again that's that's crazy say that again okay so in up till uh 1973 when they adopted the model penal code and brought in their obscenity exemption it was illegal to say the word sexual intercourse in a classroom because it was considered molesting a minor with immoral intent up to the age of 21. So that is that is that is crazy. Oh my gosh. Of kids a lot differently. And and in my research, the other part of this that I had to look at is I thought, okay, what did we do prior to Kinsey? How did we cover that topic? What did Americans do? And so uh, I love antiques. I love antique furniture. I collect antiques. But I I shifted, I always would skim over the books and the magazines. Well, I shifted. And I am looking at, as a matter of fact, I just got a great book about eugenics um, that was written in 1950. And I forget the author, but I, I'll be reading that this summer. Um, but, uh, you know, I started looking at how did they approach this topic? And um, they valued the moral innocence of kids. They didn't look at kids through Kinsey's eyes, which was yeah. a sexual pervert, but rather they looked at kids through Jesus' eyes. And they were intent on... It always went back to God's life process. It was yeah. the flowers, the birds, and the bees. And yeah. um, sad to say, even in some churches, I have heard people mock that and put it down and not understand how powerful right. sexual yeah. words and images are. And yeah. um, so uh, sex education really is the foundational pillar for the sexual revolution. And I always say, um, the sexual revolution was um, targeted three uh, um, three pillars. The first was that uh, the sexual uh, immorality was aimed at the men because the men are the head of the family. So pornography, because of Kinsey's science, pornography becomes legal in the 1950s. Then you have to aim the attack at marriage because that's the foundation of the family. So I always say it's not same-sex marriage that destroyed marriage in America, but rather you have to go back to, it was against the law to have sex outside of marriage. Um, yeah. Fornication was illegal. You could serve prison time for that. Right, and I know right. that sounds harsh today, but we took very seriously about um, protecting the family. And then right. uh, yep. the third uh, area that you've got to target is the children. You yeah, have to naturally. raise them up to believe they are sexual beings. And there's yep. no yep. better way to do that than to talk graphically with children about sex. Yep, yep. that's right. Yeah, beautifully. Oh, my gosh, Audrey, beautifully put. Na hit the nail on the head. Thank you so much. Let's dive in even deeper. So when did Kinsey start releasing um, his first science? He uh, this and again, it was a setup. The media was already setting him up to look like he was this great authority. So there were books that were being released that were all raving about Alfred Kinsey and all right. the science that he was doing, all of the scientific studies. So his book was released in 1948, and it right. was called Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. And that's the book that Judith yep. um, you know, talks about. And uh, there's one table in that book that I have blown up and put table on a poster 34. board. Yeah. And I go down to Austin, Texas, to the Capitol, and I show this poster board, I show table 34. And yep. in table 34, it documents how many orgasms does a child have in a certain amount of time. And yep. it, it's as young as five months, and it goes how up did to they, four How months. did they get that data, Audrey? I wonder how they got that data. <laughs> yes, exactly. They interviewed pedophiles, and yep. then that data was then given to Kinsey. So yep. there's even a poor four-year-old who was raped, because we'll yes. call it what it is, for tw over 24 hours. Um, yeah. And so that's the foundation of comprehensive sex education. That's yep. the foundation of Christian sex education. 
the yeah. idea of going in and talking graphically with kids about sex comes yeah. directly from that kind of yeah. mentality. Well, the, the conservative movement um, has been very effective in crafting one word in the last year. Audrey, one word that is driving the left freaking insane. They're losing their freaking minds, which means that we did something right. And that one word is groomer. Yes. You're a exactly. groomer. Have you exactly. noticed, Audrey, how much the left has lost their mind in the last eight months as the as the right wing has effectively said, OK, groomer, because you know what the left says about boomers? They say, OK, boomer. Have you heard that phrase? They say, OK, boomer. It's like a condescending way to dismiss people that are older. And so the conservatives effectively flip that and said, OK, groomer. OK, groomer, because of all this pornographic sex ed being pushed, not just at the junior high and high school level, but in freaking elementary schools and sometimes in kindergarten. And we should yeah. say that over and over and over and over again until these people combust internally. We should call them groomers forever, because if you're talking to children about sex things, you are by definition a groomer. There is no reason to awaken sexual interests or sexual desires in children. And there was a time in this country where you would be thrown in freaking prison for doing that. And so I, exactly. when I preached at Calvary Chapel Chattanooga last year, Audrey, one of the things I gave the church a call to arms to was to gird up your political loins, get the right people elected, and, uh, and repeal the obscenity exemption in Tennessee. Because if your children were being shown, some of the things they're being shown in school, in your neighbor's house while they were babysitting your kids, you could have yes. the man arrested who was showing that to your children. But if the same content is showed in a schoolroom, then it's just educational, right? It's just follow the science. Well, this was the follow the science, you guys, of, of Fauci degenerates circa 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. So, so that's why I appreciated all of that, Audrey. Now, you said in order to create a sexual revolution, you begin with targeting men, then the family or marriage, and then children. Um, some of most of Kinsey's entire research initially that he was releasing was built on lies about men and right. fathers. And yes. Judith Reisman goes in detail discussing this in her book, Sexual Sabotage. But these men were coming back from the war while Kinsey was releasing these lies saying that most men are unfaithful. Most men cheat on their wife. And I think he was even saying that like lots of men were sleeping with men as well right. as women. And, exactly. and, and, um, uh, you know, that generate the greatest generation, Audrey, you know, they're going, this, this is not true. Yeah. So talk, yeah. talk a little bit about that, please. Um, okay. Well, yeah, back then we were, I mean, we were, believe it or not, we were modest <laughs> at one point. Americans were much more modest than they are today. And, um, so you would have been offended by the questions he would have asked you anyway. So um, Judith found out through looking clo more closely at his data that he actually went into prisons and he sought out the most sexually deviant criminals and he interviewed them. He interviewed their he sex lives <laughs> and he said this is the typical sexual behavior of the American male. For the women, he interviewed prostitutes because remember to live with a person uh, and you were not married, you could serve prison time. So he would interview prostitutes if they lived with their pimp for more than a year. He said, this is the data on the American married female. So yep, again, when you look closer at his data, you find it's not, it's subjective. It's not uh, objective. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for saying, we just, we have my friend, Dr. Brent Bowles on the show all the time. He's my, he's our in-house OBGYN here at Unaborted, Audrey. And we just looked into this one book that's been used by the left in the abortion industry to claim that there are no, there are zero negative health outcomes after an abortion for the mother. Um, yes. And this book explicitly denied any negative health impacts um, in terms of the relationship between abortion and uh, breast cancer, abortion and preterm pre labor and subsequent pregnancies, and, uh, and mental health. This book denies yeah. that, that any of those things have any relationship to abortion. And then you look into it, and I'm, I'm, I'm making a bridge here between your comment and, and my insight here, and you look into the studies and the, the abortion increasing your risk of mental health. Pre, a subsequent preterm birth and and breast cancer and the the left looks at like like five studies out of 75 or like three studies yeah. out of 40 that confirm their bias 
and then they run with that three out of 40 or five out of 75 studies um, and then they they peddle it as the objective uh, uh, you know un- 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 uncontested science but when you actually look at the wealth of data and information it's like not only is there a statistical relationship between abortion and these other negative health outco- outcomes but it's obviously the case um, and so it's the same thing it, it's such statistical it's such statistical um, irresponsibility Kinsey's data was used for Roe versus Wade. Uh, The American Law Institute uh, suggested that abortion needed to be legal based on his science. And Kinsey went so far to say as uh, the more abortions that women had, the better their sex life would be. It would improve their sex life. And he said that, that many women were having the abortion rate was sky high back then. But if that were the case, then we would have also seen sexually transmitted disease rates would have been higher during that time. And we did Hmm. not see that. So again, Oh, there you go. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This is so, this is so helpful, Audrey. I love diving deeper into this and I'm sure our listeners are are just eating this up right now because people do not know this stuff. Uh, And as me, someone who does this work full time, I'm always learning new things and it's incredibly disturbing. Um, Talk about. (laughs) Try and wake up the children crisis. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Um, Talk about Margaret Sanger and Alfred Kinsey. Um, Well, they both were eugenists. They both believed in eliminating certain populations. Um, And so um, uh, they really fed off of each other, I believe. Um, You know, when you look at uh, the timeline. They were operating very similar times, right? Yes, exactly. And Mary Calderon was the uh, director, uh, you know, had a Planned Parenthood. I I call it the meeting of the minds because you have Planned Parenthood, you've got Kinsey, and then you've got Hugh Hefner bringing in the seed money. So, um, you know, and of course, well, and LGBT. Hugh Hefner. Okay, so yes, yeah. so so Margaret Sanger, yes, impacted by Kinsey, uh, and then Margaret Sanger's medical director later, uh, Mary Calderon, in 1964, yeah. leaves Planned Parenthood, takes seed money from Hugh Hefner to launch Secus, Sexuality Information Education Council of the United States, who is at the helm today of writing uh, most of and pushing most of the curriculum called Comprehensive Sexuality Education. Um, but talk a little bit about Hugh Hefner. And Alfred Kinsey, you you call him in your book Kinsley's pamphleteer. Yes, yes. Well, Kinsey was in the university; he was teaching at Indiana University. So not only was he educating um, uh, university students, he was educating professors. He was going to colleges all over the world, uh, spreading, you know, educating them on his new science and all of that he had uh, found. Educating our legislators, and so um, Hugh Hefner was the one who took Kinsey's science to uh, the the college student. So um, that is where, uh, you know, the the introduction of looking at a woman as not part of a procreative process and and being a wife and mother, but rather she was a piece of meat and uh, to be used. And so um, and that's where, again, sodomy became normalized in the heterosexual population was through pornography. And I know to even define what sodomy is, uh, sometimes I can get my husband to speak with me when we uh, go out because I've spoken all over the world. And uh, sometimes he'll come with me and we'll define what sodomy is. And it's interesting because the women come up to my side of the podium, the men come up to his side of the podium, and the women are all asking me, do you have that in writing somewhere so I could show that to my husband? And then my husband, the men are going, oh, come on. I never heard sodomy defined as that, which it's a non-procreative mm. act. And, you know, without getting into detail yeah, here on yeah, your yeah. show. But, yeah. um, you know, my husband, he'll say, did your father sit you down and teach you that? Would you put your mouth on a sewer pipe? You know, we're talking feces urine. And where did you learn that? And they always say pornography. Pornography wow. is where they learn that. So Hugh Hefner was very instrumental. Um, You know, as I said, the pornography industry has compromised our men. And I will say, um, Colonel Ron Ray, who was a former assistant to the Secretary of Defense, who worked with Judith in the RSVP campaign, 
when I met him in early um, 2001, 2002, he said to me, because he's the one who helped me write um, some of the information you have in that book is, are things that he helped bring to light for me. And wow. um, he said, Audrey, we live in Deborah times. He said, the, um, because of pornography, our men have been compromised. He said, it may take the women to get the purity movement going in America again. He said, right. the men will get on board, but it's going to take the women to get it going. And I don't know if you've seen uh, the movie that we're, we're in called The Mind Polluters. Mind polluters uh, yeah. Monica and I are in that. But there's a part where uh, Craig Sawyer, who uh, battles, you know, he does child sex trafficking rescues, and wow. he talks about it's mostly women. You know, where are the yeah. men? And yeah. so, you know, this is yeah. a call. When you even say the word biblical purity, that's a bad word in the church, you know, um, and, and crisis pregnancy. When I first found out this information, I'm like, where do I go? What do I do with this information? And I thought, I know I become an abstinence educator. So I went to the local crisis pregnancy center to get trained in abstinence education. And one of the speakers said, OK, now what you're going to do is you're going to take these pictures of diseased genitals and you're going to show them to the students so that they will understand what sexually transmitted diseases are. Now they said, oh yeah, we show this to seventh and eighth graders. And I thought, what if they haven't ever seen an adult naked person? Why would you show them that? I mean, there are sick people who pay money to see those kinds of things. So wow. uh, I kept hearing in my head, you're a holy uh, you know, you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right, 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 right. children belonging to God. And I thought, how could I possibly treat children like this? So I thought, okay, I guess abstinence education isn't the way. So wow. I have been bandwagon for 30 years saying, we've got to get back to biblical purity because our young people are under more attack than any previous generation. And I always say it's because uh, you are the nation that's you're going you're the generation that's going to bring this nation back so yeah, yeah. i don't talk about pregnancy when i talk to young people i don't talk about teen pregnancy or stds i talk there about their identity being in jesus christ because that's what's going to dictate their actions their thoughts uh and their values and then we talk about okay satan's got it down pat i talk a little bit about the history of the sexual revolution and how it because right. they I mean, it's all around them. They know it's bad. They just don't know yeah. why. It was a plan. And so yeah. I share that with them. And I'll tell you, I have teen boys that are like shaking their heads yes when I'm talking about putting the full armor of God. And girls are coming up to me afterwards and going, oh, my gosh, nobody ever talks to us like this. And, you wow. know, let's activate this generation. If they're the generation of activists, why aren't we activating them for the Lord? Why aren't right, we right. teaching them how to live pure lives in today's culture? Because that yep. can be done. Yep, that's right. Amen. That's powerfully said. Well, you know, because so many people have almost been forced, they might argue, into playing on the enemy's terms because we've lost so much of the culture, right? And so rather than demanding good standards— and objectively true and beautiful standards, we sort of capitulate and say, well, I'll work with what I've been given, right? And so we allow the other side to define the terms of engagement. And so it's just kind of managed decline, right? Mm -hmm. It's like people now are almost more committed to managing the decline of Western civilization rather than actually reasserting a standard, uh, a line, yes. and putting yeah. that line in the sand and saying, uh, we're not going to cross this anymore. Uh, and so so I appreciate that, uh, Audrey. Can you talk a little bit more about the progression of the sexual revolution and its liturgy of comprehensive sexuality education after the 1950s and 60s? So you have SICUS, um, but there are other groups today. Um, can you talk anything about the relationship between those groups, those their roots with the same sort of thought leaders. Maybe give us the names of some of those other organizations. I think Answer is one. Um, Teen Talk. There's others. Um, right. uh, and and you know how widespread is this in in education today? Uh, you know, kind of move forward from from '64 onward. Well, and I I was going to mention this before that. Um, 
after Roe versus Wade, um, the um, press ran up to Planned Parenthood and they ran up to the director at the time, who was Alan Guttmacher, yeah. and they said, how can we make sure that uh, abortion stays legal forever in America? And he only answered with two words, sex education. No. So, uh, yeah, sex education. <laughs> that was in the Washington Star in 1973 was the Do quote. you have that? Uh, it's in the, my book. It's in my book. Oh, and okay. I have it is. It is. For it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's how important <laughs> sex education is. So before, That's like the smoking gun. That's I know, like, whoa. It is. It is. And so, um, and actually in the movie, that's what I talk about is that uh, sex education used to be about the act in the genitals. And we've gone way beyond that now. So um, birth control was something that was was pushed because it was un-American to have more because you said it. The well, U.S. Population yeah. Council, along with yeah, the, the wealthy population elite, bomb, Paul yeah, Ehrlich, Swift, yeah. Sanger, and Kinsey, they yeah. all wanted to control, control the population. Well, so, and, and specifically and, certain people groups, <laughs> right? Yes, <laughs> and, Sanger and, once said, Audrey, she said, uh, eugenics without birth control seems to us a house built upon the sands. It is at the yes. mercy of the rising streams of the unfit. <laughs> yes. So, yes. And I, I think people don't realize, uh, you know, and again, I'm talking from a biblical worldview. I'm talking from a Christian view, but it's very telling in the 1970s, there was, or I'm sorry, it was in the 1967, it was called the Time of Your Life series. And hmm. it was teaching children at that time in the sex education that by the year 2000, there would be no more organized religions and fathers would no longer have a place in the home. Now, why would wow. they mention that in a sex education other than the fact that sex education was a tool used to destroy the church and to destroy the traditional family? And if you look at, I, I've, uh, I just heard a sermon last Sunday talking about the amount of Single parent homes in America is at an all time yeah. high, uh, and a church attendance is at an all time low. So I'd say they yeah. they've been pretty successful because it's yeah. a plan that's gone unopposed, yeah. and yeah. it's a plan that the I'm sad to say the churches you know in the fifties and the sixties the churches are starting to see this moral shift, and now they've got Kinsey Science, which is the authority. And so um, what was stunning to me is I found that, you know, uh, I, I actually spoke to Focus on the Family staff, and I said, to be honest, if I go down to your bookstore, 90% of your Christian sex ed material or your marital intimacy materials, I could trace it back to Kinsey. Um, wow. So, um, really? you know, and, and yeah. uh, I've had a few occasions where I, I had, the, I'll never forget, it happened, they both happened within a year, where... Someone invited me to come to a church to hear a sermon series on human sexuality. And to be honest, when I hear that, it's never biblical. Well, pure, pure biblical. It's biblical and Kinsey meshed together. And so wow. I called the, my ministry is called the Matthew 18 group, which is based on Matthew 18, 15 to 17. And so I go to my fellow brother who's in error and I go to the pastor and I say, hey, you know, great sermon series. However, when you used this authority, do you realize who Kinsey is? And I always know I'm in trouble when at the end they go, you know, and I, I again, I've crossed my T's. I've dotted my I's. I'm showing them, ex worth, you know, this is what you're using. These are the books right. you're using. This is where this comes from. And they always say, so what's your point here? And I'll have Kinsey's book, you know, Sexual wow. Behavior and American male, and I'll have the Bible. And I'll say, my point is, I said, the reason we're losing this battle in America is because, and I put the two books together, we're talking wow. from here. Yeah. If we only would talk from here with the Bible, we'd yep. be in a better shape in the church. And yep. that's yep. why the churches have been compromised. And so trying, my ministry is all about waking up the churches. And I love um, you know, the fact that I'm a professor at a little online college, I get to teach this stuff to pastors all over the world. And wow, I'll tell you, good. watching the Holy Spirit move, moving through them when they just yeah. are given the data and the information. Yeah, and, eyes open, yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. They're, they're also that, that's what, yeah. And, and I, I mentioned to you as the sermon I gave at Calvary Chapel Chattanooga was called the, the Religion, Sacrament, and Liturgy of Planned Parenthood. I've only given that sermon twice at one other church. Uh, that, I, I, I spent days on that because um, Planned Parenthood was trying to get into Chattanooga. And so they had yeah. just hired a sex educator and a community yes. organizer for the city of Chattanooga with the obvious goal of opening up an abortion center. And so my Ezekiel Watchman warrior of a friend who yep. leads that church, Pastor Frank, called me and he said, can you come out and fire up our people and, and educate uh-huh. and inspire us? Yeah. And my point was this, though, Audrey, seeing people go, what? Yeah. <laughs> when I talked about this stuff was like, you know, so, you know, but the Bible says my people suffer for lack of knowledge. Right. Um, right. And, and so, you know, you, you, you are uh, what we need more of in this country, which is Ezekiel Watchmen, um, who see the swords of the enemy coming and blow the trumpet. So the people will be warned. Um, and if that, if we've ever needed more trumpet blowers, uh, then right now, I don't, I don't know when that was. Um, as we wind down, uh, Audrey, um, Talk a little bit about um, these other organizations. I just want people to understand uh, when they hear about sex ed in their schools, I want them to understand some of the other names, maybe other figures, um, organizations, perhaps, because we've seen this parental uprising, haven't we, in the last year? Uh, These parents at school board meetings. It's been incredible to watch. And guess what? Guess why they're usually there? One of two reasons either critical race theory or kooky pornographic sex ed. That's basically it. That's essentially it. Because I I watch all these viral clips that go viral with these pissed off parents. And of course, Merrick Garland, the attorney general of freaking America, who's still pissed off um, because Mitch McConnell prevented him from getting a seat on the Supreme Court at the end of the Obama administration, is having his wrath against Republicans for being denied a seat on the highest court in the land. And so he labeled these parents, do you remember last year, Audrey? Domestic terrorists. Yes. So I'm a domestic terrorist now, Audrey, because I blasted my school board uh, here in Thousand Oaks, and and I and I I gave a six minute talk, and I went into uh, Wardell Wardell Pomeroy, uh, Mary Calderon, Hugh Hefner, Alfred Kinsey, Table Thirty Four, Sexuality in the Human Male, um, and all of this stuff. And um, so I guess I'm I'm a I'm a domestic terrorist now. Of course, if you burn down whole city blocks in major metropolitan cities in America, I guess that's just mostly peaceful. But my point is this: um, there is this uprising happening amongst parents who are realizing yeah. what you've known for so long, and they're going, "What the heck?" Uh, and if yeah. anything is going to save this country, it's going to be the wrath of righteous parents. Uh, and so, uh, t- talk a little bit about that. Maybe anything else we should know? Um, yeah. Um, and, and when I first found this information, it is, it's overwhelming, as you've noticed over the last year. This is overwhelming information. And so I started going to everybody trying to wake people up, especially in the church. I kept hitting brick wall after brick wall. So I finally said, Lord, I don't have time to deal with this. Just get me to the remnant. And I ended up doing a legislative briefing down in Austin, Texas. And I'm like, really? (laughs) The remnant is in the government? Yes, there are some godly leaders that are in the right place at the right time. Austin's Austin's bad now. (laughs) um, And then I ended up going over to Uganda to speak. Uh, I met a pastor at Dallas Theological Seminary, and he invited me to come and speak um, to his village. And I didn't find out till later. That's where the AIDS epidemic began. So he had asked me to and teach my course on biblical purity in the community where the AIDS epidemic began, which is wow. so like, and cool. um, so, um, you know, I've shifted to Lord, just get me to the remnant. So, so now um, God has been faithful in that. And, and, it, and I've been praying for 30 years, God, take the blinders away from your people's eyes right. and soften their hearts to the truth because We were all born in the sexual revolution, and I have parents who will come up to me and say, how can I possibly teach my child about purity when I messed up in that area? And I know that we were were lied to and deceived, and we've been let down that. But I remind them that we have a loving Savior who died on the cross, and all we have to do is go repent, give it to him. He's going to heal us of that, and we're going to equip our children to walk a better walk than we did. So, um, you know, I want to be encouraging the parents and watching this rising up. Today, I'm on a a group with 
multiple parent um, organizations here in Texas that are rising up and it's getting larger and larger. And I think that is what's going to unite this country. I think when yep. people find out, because we are the number one consumer of pornography and we are now the number one, um, I'm sorry, uh, we are the number one, we um, uh, export pornography. Yep. We're the number one distributor of pornography to the world. And we're the number one consumer of child sex trafficking. And it's going wow. on all over the place. And like you said, we're talking about groomers now. And I think that's, that's where people are going, wait a minute, that is not yep. right. Cannot yep. do that to yeah. a child. Well, because they full on normalize grooming under the exactly. veil of just science and just education. Exactly. But anyone with two brain cells to rub together still can look at that and go, that, that, that's not education, man. You know, exactly. And that's that's the point, because if you can titillate the masses, you can upend yeah. society. And that's always been yeah. the goal of the modern left, right? Because if you can debase people to their most like animalistic sexual cravings, then yeah. they're not going to care about anything else because they're exactly. going to be so addicted to self-fulfillment and self-realization, right, to, to use the terms of the left, um, that that their sole focus is going to be me, 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 uh, right? Or or to, uh, to quote the serpent in Genesis 3, uh, ye shall be as gods. Um, yeah. Your eyes will be opened. Uh, it's all about you. God's holding out on you. Try this. Hey, t try this tasty, juicy apple. Then your eyes will be opened because they're not opened right now because God's holding out on you. So here, try yeah. this thing. Isn't it enticing? Uh, and it's, it's just sort of the same movement today. Um, and right. finally, people are waking up to that. Uh, Audrey, let's finish with this. Uh, and it's how I started the show, but we forgot to get back to it. Um, because I think that parents should be prepared to count the cost on behalf of their children. Um, yep. You published an article shortly after you became aware of all this stuff on the history of comprehensive sexuality education, and boy, did you hit a nerve. Um, I yeah. want you to tell that story because I think as we begin to stand for life and liberty and our children, um, those who do so will also hit a nerve with the spirit of the age and his disciples um, who have always been focused on destroying the family and targeting children. So I want them to be prepared to understand this might not be easy, but it's worth the battle. It's worth the cost. But tell that story very quickly. Um, yes. Also, so people understand how committed these people are to their agenda. Yes, and I, I will back that up by telling um, what Judas said was in 1998, if you can imagine the Kinsey Institute having a big celebration of 50 years, because 48 to 1998, that's 50 years of his science being out there. So they had a big wow. celebration in San Francisco. So if you can Im imagine the world leading pedophiles and abortionists and pornographers all coming together to celebrate. And the director of the Kinsey Institute at the time was Dr. John Bancroft. And Judith wanted to hear what he had to say. So she snuck into that celebration and she listened. And he said, oh. you know, hold on, we got a problem here. He said, and he talked about a documentary that was done called Kinsey's Pedophiles, which you can find on YouTube. And so wow. he's talking about this, this documentary that Yorkshire Television, they had come over and done, because everything in America lionizes him. But this showed the truth about Kinsey. And so he's complaining about that. And then he says, and this Judith Reisman. Now he looked at the audience and he said, you don't understand. If this gets out there, we could lose everything we gained in the last 50 years. No. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? They know that they are on they a shifting know. They know. They know. They know. Yep. They know. They so know. okay. So do now you, they know. Do you parents? Do you know? Because they yes. know. It's the same and thing that Harrison Hickman, a former pollster for the National Abortion Rights Action League, said at the 20th anniversary for NARAL. Uh, um, Audrey, it's the same thing. He said probably nothing has been as damaging to our cause as the advances in technology, which have allowed yes. pictures of the developing yes. fetus, because yes. people now talk about the fetus in much different terms than they did 15 years ago. They talk yes. about it as a human being, which yes. is not something I have an easy answer on how to cure. Yes. You got Harrison Hickman, and you've got uh, Bancroft, the leader of the Kinsey yes. Institute, basically telling the 
telling the good people in America the same thing, which is we know that what we defend is evil and and yes. perverted, um, but we don't want others to know that. Because if yes. others know that, we don't know how to stop the dam from yes. breaking. Pretty yes. pretty damning yes. admission. But thank it you is. for for saying thank you it for is. saying so telling that, that Judith Reisman so, story. Yes. So that sets up that it's two thousand two, two thousand three, and and I'm in a small town, and this local newspaper, the local Planned Parenthood gal, was encouraging parents. It was October. The month of October is when Planned Parenthood encourages parents to talk to their kids about sex and be graphic. They want the, you know, they want the parent to sexualize the child. So they right. promote that. And so I thought, oh, I can't stand this anymore. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write a, a rebuttal to that. And then the newspaper probably won't even print it, but I'm going to send it in. And I sent it in and um, I got, you know, nothing happened. I thought, well, they printed it. And I thought, wow, they really printed it. So Two weeks later, okay. my friend calls and says, Audrey, you got a rebuttal to your rebuttal. And I said, okay. I said, what did Jody from Planned Parenthood say from the local Planned No, no, bigger. I said, okay, well, what did the director of Planned Parenthood say? And she said, no, no, bigger. And she <laughs> said, the director, Dr. John Bancroft, the director of the Kinsey Institute, <laughs> the personally rebuttal. And, and so uh, and then my article was called Sex Education is Killing Our Children. And so his article Whoa. back to me was Kinsey's not to blame for sexual disease and dysfunction. And so he <laughs> had to put more propaganda out there to counter wow. what I had said. And I was so excited. I called Judith up and I go, Judith, you're not going to believe who just read my article. Wow. And I thought... Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Chronicles of Narnia, the third film, uh, which they go into this abyss, which is like hell. It's this little ship with just a few people on it, and they have the sword. They have the sword. And he cuts off one little tentacle of this massive dragon, and they look at each other and they go, we could win this thing. And that's right, right. exactly how I felt, because a mom, with the help of Almighty God, cut off a little tentacle and said... We can win this thing. That's and fast right. forward to when I'm in Uganda, God opened a door. And I actually, on my last day, I ended up, total God thing, ended up speaking to members of parliament. And a mom, wow. with the help of Almighty God, halted Planned Parenthood International and the UN from putting sex ed in their schools in Uganda. So, wow, no way. You know, I encourage Praise parents God. to step out in faith. God called wow. his prayer. Come Colonel Array always said, prayer and action, prayer and action. Yeah. You've got to have the faith. You pray, and then you step out and do what yeah. God's called you to do. We have That's to speak amazing. people. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wow, Audrey, what a great way to finish. I'm glad I remembered that because that's a powerful story. A little local news article pissing off the director of the Kinsey Institute <laughs> who admits that if Reisman's research and work gets out, this will ruin everything. Um, you guys, you'll have to check out lots of Judith Reisman's pieces. Audrey, we're going to have you back on at some point to talk about Judith, just her alone and her life's work and the Reisman Institute. I'm, I'm so bummed I never got to meet her before she passed, but um, yeah. we'll have to talk about Judith with you uh, next time. Uh, very quickly, Audrey, tell people the name of your book and where to get it before we say goodbye. Yes, uh, 10 Tips on How Not to Talk to Your Kids About Sex. And the um, I wrote it in um, 2017. But okay. uh, if you are going on Amazon, you can get it on Amazon. But look for the revised and expanded edition because I've doubled the size of it. When I did right. the book the first time, I just did biblical principles you can use to raise pure kids. But then I thought, gosh, I, you know, I don't want to scare parents telling them all this other stuff, but now's the time. So now my book's That's double right. the size. So the first half awesome. of the book is the history of the sexual revolution and sex ed and what's happened in Good. our country. And then the second half is the biblical principles. Great. Awesome, Audrey. Wow. Well, well we're going to put a link to that so people can get it. Uh, Audrey, thank you for coming on. What a blessing. You're a blessing. Thanks for the work that you do. Uh, guys, check out Audrey Werner's book. Check out her ministry, Matthew uh, 18. And uh, I'm sure we'll have lots of comments to have you back on soon. Keep up the good work, Audrey. Okay. Thank you. The same to you. 
Same to you, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining the show today, guys. Head on over to iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. Give the show rating and review. Let us know what you think. It drives it up the charts. More people th- see it. We appreciate it. If you want to follow me online, you can go to TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Give me a follow. Share the content. We'll create reels out of this. We want people to learn about the debauched history of all these ideas so you can protect your children and the posterity of the country. To book me for an event or to see my speaking schedule, go to sethgruber.com. And to join my organization to become an ally of the White Rose Resistance, go to www.thewhiterose.life, thewhiterose.life. Until next week, I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. (laughs) 